Hey everyone, Bill Parrish here with GTT Audio and welcome to the channel today. Well, this past Monday we had Labor Day here in the U.S., which is really the official end of summer, kids going back to school, and my favorite time, the start of the hi-fi season. We really run, it really kicks off right after Labor Day, so, uh, and things have been great. Business has been terrific. Uh, thank you, my viewers. The, uh, the view counts are increasing. So someone's out there watching that. And if you are, I, I appreciate it. And go down and hit that like button if you would. So today I want to sort of revisit uh, what I talked about in episode three. Way back in episode three, I talked about uh, how to stream digital right. And I showed how we had the Moa Moa Tamba key and how we wired that to an Auralic Aries and we did some cables in between. Um, and then we, I showed you a power supply um, for, uh, for the Rune Nucleus. We were talking about Rune, which I still believe is, is the best way to stream music is through a Rune. It's a great database, great app. Get yourself a Nucleus in the grand scheme of the system. It's, it's, it's not very much. And that's a thing that we'll talk about today as well. You know, the grand scheme and sort of slicing and dicing up the funds and, and that. First of all, so I'm gonna bring in the Mola Mola Tambaki deck. This deck, in my opinion, is the, is the finest deck I've heard out there, bar none. Whether I'm comparing it to digital stacks from England, from the US, from Japan, it doesn't matter. As far as I'm concerned, the Mola Mola Tambaki from the Netherlands is uh, is top notch. I haven't heard anything better. But it's a neutral deck. And what do I mean by neutral? Well, natural. I I know what real instruments sound like. I know the difference between a Yamaha, a Steinway, and a Bosendorfer piano. I uh, you know I attend real music. I I know that. Uh, what, what a true bass sounds like. I know what real resolution in the bottom end sounds like. And this guy does it all. And this thing has, I mean, it's got a, an incredible top end, an incredible mid range, and uh, incredible bottom end. I mean, it, there, there's all the way through, but it sounds as a piece. Nothing calls attention to itself. But as Bruno Putzi put uh, when he designed Moa Moa, truth is beauty. So it doesn't color anything. If you want a warm deck, it's not for you. If you want a cool deck, it's not for you. If you want a deck that exaggerates the bass, it's not for you. And if you want a deck with a sweet high end, it's not for you. It's for the person that wants to hear what the actual files digital files sound like. What in digital files, whether it's coming from a CD or coming off of a hard drive, it's still a file. It's still a, 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 a digital file. Everyone sounds different. There's no two that are recorded exactly alike. I mean, you have different studios, you have different mics, you have different mic cables. They cannot sound the same. If you have a sameness throughout your system, then your system is seriously flawed. I mean, we go, we're always after this endless pursuit of the absolute sound. And so we try different things, but what you don't want to do is have colored sound, or at least that's not my objective. I, I don't want everything to sound beautiful. I don't want everything to sound bad. I don't want anything to sound bad, but some recordings are just plain bad, you know? But uh, I, I've got a horrible recording that I actually love 
from 1929, Heifetz playing the violin. It's filled with noise. It's really crappy, but the emotion that comes through is phenomenal. It's worth it. It's a historic recording. I listen to it for what it is. I know what it is, and I, and I, and I accept it as that. Well, so the Moa Moa, um, I, what I might have confused you about in episode three is that you need the Aries and all these other accessories. Going back here, the Moa Moa has this Ethernet jack that my finger's on. That is a Rune endpoint. You can, you're running Rune on your network, take your Ethernet cable, connect it, and you're good to go. You can start streaming music and play music, uh, play your files. Uh, the, the, the MOA MOA is Rune certified. In Rune, you'll find it, you'll, you'll access it, and you are good to go. And this Rune endpoint is as good as any Rune endpoint I've ever heard in a built-in DAC. So when I talk about other accessories or other components, I'm not saying that the Tambaki Rune endpoint is not good. It is. It's fantastic. Like I said, it's as good as anything else I've ever heard. But there are ways to improve it. It's that endless pursuit to the absolute sound. How do we improve it? We've taken the Ethernet cable. How, how do we do that? Well, okay, so let's bring out what we had last time. And... Here's the Orlick Aries G2.1. Brand new, fresh. Got the wireless. I still like Ethernet, but uh, it's got the wireless there. Yeah, your Ethernet goes there. You can plug a hard drive in there. If you're not running Rune, if you are running Rune, uh, you bypass that. Your hard drives into your nucleus or connected to that somehow. You've got your USB cable here that comes out of that into the the Rune, and then you've got your RCA and XLR analog outputs. So if I take this Oralic Aries G2.1, $4,800, and now I need to connect it over here to the Moa Moa Tambaki USB cable, Kabbalah Sosna realization. Um, $3,500. I'm going to need a power cord. Take a power cord, a realization power cord. Plug it in to the Aries G2.1. Now you've just added $11,900. Almost the same price as the Tambaki. Do you think it will improve the sound? I do. I know. I've heard it. It's pretty significant. It doesn't mean the Rune Endpoint and the Tambaki is bad. It's fantastic, but add another 11.9 and it will bowl you over. Now, this, $4,800, you're like, oh my god, 11.9. Well, for $4,800, that Rune or this uh, Oralic Aries G2.1 is, is the bomb. I mean, it's better then, just like the Tambaki, better than other DACs I've heard, the, this, uh, this Orlick, Aries G2.1, the best streamer I've ever heard. Certainly better than the streamers from South Korea, Hong Kong, Spain. Those are popular. They don't sound like this. So, if you've got a $10,000 system, this is stupid. You, you wouldn't do this, right? I mean, you know, you hear about the point of di diminishing returns. It makes sense. If you have a $20,000 system, are you really going to add an additional 11.9 to, you know, it's, it doesn't make sense. But now you've got a $100,000 system. Adding 12% of the system cost into an additional streamer that has 
dual femto clocks in there that re-clock all the data, has a linear, very quiet uh, power supply, has galvanetic isolation between the USB output and what's going on inside. I mean, it's all about lowering noise, and this does it. So would you spend 12% of your system cost to handle your front end, your, to get your digital files right? I think so, but that's your call. But now what if you have a $200,000 system? Well, now you're at 6%. I think it's a no-brainer. What if you've got a $300,000 system? You're at 3%. A $400,000 system, you're at 1.5% of the system cost to get your digital files right. Of course you're going to do it. This, this is what we talk about with that endless pursuit. I mean, you know, the, I throw these numbers out there. And, you know, I do, we don't sell any mid-fi at GTT Audio. Since we started, since 1995, we've never sold mid-fi. We are high-end audio. I mean, you can buy a seven, eight, ten thousand dollar Japanese receiver today, home theater receiver. So, you know, where some of these, it's true that some of the cost of components have gotten out of hand. We still try to bring a value at its price point. You know, our, our hundred thousand dollar amps. I think will beat any amp on the planet. And there are $250,000 amps out there. But what I want to tell you is, if you come to GTT Audio and you spend $2,000 or you spend a million dollars, you're going to get treated the same. I don't know how to do it any, any different. I'm the same guy all the time. So, you know, it's... Feel free to call me. Don't be intimidated by, by high numbers and high dollar items that we sell. And we do get trade-ins. And with trade-ins, you know, they, they sell where, where the, you know, at the market price, at the street price. So, uh, you know, there's, there's deals. Give us a call and let us build, a, build your system. But today, you know, what I really wanted to do was just kind of go back to episode three and uh, and talk about this. You know, it's it's funny this Tambaki DAC. We've just had some great reviews. If you get our newsletter when I announce when each video's coming out, um, I, in the last one I attached a couple of videos. Um, there was a review. Um, there was a review from the audio analyst. Greg Weaver, who was talking about a, what a fantastic performer this was for such a, a, a low price point. Well, J Greg's used to reviewing Uber Dower equipment. And then in the same newsletter, we released uh, Johnny Darko, Darko's uh, video. And he was talking about a, what a great performer Mola Mola was at such an expensive price point. <laughs> and he compared it to other expensive uh, pieces and found it better. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, that's great. That kind of drives home what I'm saying as far as, you know, that's the best DAC I've heard. But everything's perception. Is this an expensive DAC or is this a cheap DAC? I would say it's probably 50-50 out there. Some, you know, Moa Moa is uh, 13 k in the U.S. and 13.4. And is this, uh, you know, some people don't want to see it because it's too expensive. Others think, how could it possibly be good? It's only 13.4. I say try it. Try it. Listen to it. If... If a DAC that gives you what comes in, goes out, is, is, your, uh, is your objective, this is the DAC for you. Well, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment below. We'll see you in two weeks.